Hi everyone and welcome into this new episode. Today I'm giving you the most requested video. It took me time to prepare and I hope you will enjoy. In case you want to have a look over the project, the Blender file is available on my Gumroad for free. The goal of this video is to show you how I use the 3D for making a 2D animation. The first step is to model the character as close as the anime reference. Knowing my decent level in 3D, I imported a basic human model and start building for me. It's a lot of work, because beside of it, you also have to count the rigging and the animation. That's why I will be brief on this part, but I hope my Blender file will give you more hints. For now, the most important thing is to have a 3D model to exploit. The Line Art Modifier is an interesting tool for generating lines from any 2D object. In this example, I'm going to select my character and all the 2D features, then press M to put them in a collection. Now Shift A to add an empty grease pencil object. It's very visible on screen, but you can find it in the layer tab. I also need a camera, in my case I'm going to reset mine and place it in order to face the 2D model and the grease pencil. Select the grease pencil, then select the camera and Ctrl P to parent. If you plan to animate the camera, I recommend it. To animate the camera, press numpad 0 to go into camera view, then on the view tab, tick the option camera to view. So you can navigate in the viewport while positioning your camera. However, don't forget to untick this option when you're done. I'm keyframing my camera in order to have two different shots over the character. To keyframe, press I over the viewport, then select Location Rotation Scale. Camera is done, let's apply the Line Art modifier. Select the grease pencil object, go to the modifier tab and add the line art modifier. Select collection as the source type, then choose the collection made earlier. Because it's an empty grease pencil object, I need to create a layer for the lines and also create a stroke material. So go in the stroke tab to create a new layer. Then on the material tab, create a new material. By default, it creates the stroke material and that's perfect. Back on the modifier tab to select the target layer and the target material. Right after this, the line art will show up. To clearly see the grease pencil over the 3D, go to object tab, viewport display, then set the grease pencil in front. At this stage, I usually adjust the thickness of the lines and check if some important details are missing. You can use the Mac Freestyle Edge features to indicate manually some edges to reveal by the line art modifier. On any 2D object, switch into edit mode, select the edges to reveal, right click, mark Freestyle Edge. This tip is really handy to catch up with details. One more thing before moving on, is to bake the line art. Baking the line art will allow to stop the modifier generating lines in real time. That's the reason why the software feels laggy. Instead of baking every frame from start to finish, I choose to bake them in parts. By defining my timeline in sections, I can bake a single image when the character is idle and a series when an action happens. In that way, your computer will thank you. Take time to edit and space your keyframes. This adjustment will break the monotony and the rotoscoping feeling. Thank you. 
The final step is to reproject the line art in order to flatten them into 2D. Keeping them in that state can lead to drawing's problem later. On any keyframe, switch to edit mode, press A to select the drawing, grease pencil menu, clean up, reproject stroke, then choose view. Press F3 to search, type reproject strokes, then select view. It's a shortcut, now just press A to select the drawing, F3, reproject strokes, view. Repeat the process to all the keyframes and you're done. And voila, line art process over. Create a new 2D animation scene, then go to File, Open, Find a 2D project, Grease Pencil folder, select the file in it, then Open. In my opinion, it's preferable to dissociate the 3D file from the 2D to work on a fresh Grease Pencil scene. After importing, feel free to resize if you need it. Remember, this is the reason why the parenting on the camera was important. To keep the grease pencil only visible from the front, and it does make sense since this is 2D. My drawing process hasn't really changed. If you want to know more about my drawing method in grease pencil, I recommend you to watch this video. But to recap, everything about drawing is in draw mode. You have plenty of tools for drawing lines and other shapes. The edit mode helps for making selections, if you need to select precisely elements in order to move or delete them, and the scalp mode for deforming and correcting lines. Anyway, you're probably wondering why am I drawing over the line art. The answer is that I couldn't bring out much lines from the modifier due to my basic skills in 3D so drawing helps to complete that lack. That's why you see me spending some time on the design. If I can give you a tip, it would be to prioritize working in layers. I'm currently using two layers, one with the line at reference and a second when I'm working on. I know it sounds evident, but it doesn't hurt to repeat it. If you watch closely the sequence, the first seconds are animated on loop, which is an easy way to give a slight of life for a non-animated shot. The quick way for making a loop is to separate each animated element on a respective layer, the fur, the dress, the necklace, the earring and the hair. Work and interpolate layer by layer, and be sure to keep the non-animated elements on a separate layer as well. For example, with the fur, duplicate the first keyframe and place it few frames forward. The second keyframe will define the half of the loop. Duplicate one more time for closing it. Edit and transform that middle keyframe by imagining the fur blowed by the wind. To interpolate, I set the timeline cursor between the two keyframes. With the mouse over the viewport, Ctrl Shift E to interpolate in sequence. Some breakdowns will be created automatically. You can edit them by opening the scroll menu at the bottom left corner. I set my breakdowns every 4 frames instead of 1. Then I move the timeline cursor to the second portion of the loop and same Ctrl Shift E to interpolate in sequence. Hit the playback button, check and adjust as necessary. In the final sequence, I purposely customized the loop with some extra keyframes in order to diversify the emotions. It's a personal choice and you're totally free to choose which style suits you better. For the second part, I use the pose to pose. Combined with the line art, this method really simplified the animation process. On a new layer, I start drawing the first frame. I take the time needed to draw properly the character. Once this step done, the rest will be easier.
Instead of drawing everything, I use the line art layer to copy and paste strokes. It's a really good trick for working faster. To do this, display your line art layer, then in edit mode, select the strokes to copy. When you're done, press Ctrl C to copy. Back on your drawing layer, be sure to be on the right keyframe, now Ctrl V to paste. The stroke are thinner, and by keeping the selection, I'm going to thicker them with the radius tool. Keep repeating the process keyframe after keyframe and use that trick anytime. Coloring is the most tedious part and probably the worst to deal with. Even myself, I keep dealing with problems. But as long as you know the software, you can easily solve them. I made a video on this topic if you want to learn more about it. But for this project, I'm going to give you a few tips for working faster. First, merge all the layers into one and unique line art layer. Second, create a new layer and trace a rectangle at the same size of the camera frame. For make it short, this rectangle act like the edges of the camera. It helps for closing the lines when the drawing is out of frame. And finally, create another layer for the coloring and place it below the line art layer. In this order, the line art layer will stand out from the color layer. Before starting to fill colors, you have to select the fill tool and use the material called solid fill. Basically, this material is set for filling in gray, but instead of creating many fill materials with different colors, it's easier to use the vector color. This option allows you to create a custom color palette. Click on this icon to create a new palette. By clicking here, you can use the eyedropper to pick any color or find them manually in the color wheel. Be sure to save your colors by adding them with the plus. With the timeline set on the keyframe, click into the areas to fill. It's supposed to work fine. Also, to see the colors, don't forget to change the viewport shader to material preview. Keep continue keyframe after keyframe, color by color. This is the basic method for coloring even if the slowest. But thanks to some great features, it can be slightly boosted. In my opinion, to fill color properly, you have to set the precision tool at the maximum. It might pull a bit on the GPU, but for this result, it's worth it. You could notice in some situation, the fill tool isn't operate or not correctly, and it's mainly due to some unjoint strokes. To fix it, you have to enable the stroke extension. Go in the advanced tab, stroke extension, and set any value. When you are about to fill, first click to activate the extension, middle scroll to adjust, then click again to fill. It's a recurrent problem, and this feature is very helpful when you have no idea where the gaps are. By the way, to fill faster, you can use the multi-fill tool. It allows you to fill multiple keyframes at once. Select the keyframes to fill, activate the multiframe, then just fill the color. It will fill the same area for all the keyframes selected. However, it only works when the drawings are overlaid and not too spread out. In this example, it's perfect, so use it wisely. I won't show you the full coloring, but I hope you got the ID. It's a very long process, so be patient. My shading process is a mix between animation and coloring. It works with two layers. 
one for the edges and one for the shading. First create a layer for the edges, then go to the material tab to create a new stroke material and choose the standout color for it. With the draw tool selected and the new stroke material, mark and define all the shadows area. When the edge is done, duplicate the keyframe for preparing the interpolation. Shape it to match the animation, then interpolate. Use the interpolation tool to interpolate manually by clicking, dragging and release. This is a preview of the first shading step. The second step is the filling. So create a layer for the shading, then set it on multiply. Select the fill tool, use the vector color and choose a gray tone. Fill all the shadows areas and be sure to put that layer just above the color layer. When you're done the filling, unhide the color layer to see the result. If the shadows are too dark, just decrease the opacity at your preference. Hide the edge layer and you're done. I'm aware that's a tough process, but for now, I haven't found yet a better option. For the last part of this video, I'm going to show you how to do the FX for the shining elements. Create an empty grease pencil object, then create a new layer. Then on the visual effect property, add glow and choose any glow color of your choice. Create a basic fill material. Select the fill tool, put on vector color and choose the same glow color. By drawing over the elements, the glow will operate to shine them. Be sure to set the viewport shader into render preview in order to see the effects. And that's it. So it's up to you to keyframes and decide when the glow should hit. I want to end this video on few words. While I'm finalizing this project, I won't have the time to show you the creation of the background. But if you really want to, you can learn it from this tutorial by Christoph Deden. If you watch until here, thank you so much. I really appreciate it and I hope this video helped a lot. Even if I wasn't here all the time, I feel so grateful for the continuous support bring on this channel from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, and until next time, cheers!